Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this time, God. We thank you for this night. We indeed call out to dry bones and come alive, God. We just thank you, God, for another night that we can come together, God, get into your word, see what you have to say unto us through your word, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord, that your spirit be in this place. We thank you for your spirit being in this place. And uh, we just give you all the glory and the praise for this night. Have your way as you see fit. Use me as you see fit. May your body be edifying, Lord. And you receive all glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Sound doctrine. Amen. Disclaimer. Disclaimer. Though I am before you tonight, know that I sit with you. This, is, this just isn't, this is not only for tonight, but every night that I'm up here, I sit with you guys when scripture is going forward. So it's never me just up here. I'm seated with you guys, even though I'm up before you. So disclaimer before I even get into this word tonight of sound doctrine. All right, let's get into it. Look at your neighbor, just in case, and say all scripture. All scripture. All scripture. All scripture. Let's get into it. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Amen? Amen. All scripture. All right? Let's break it down some more. All scripture is inspired by God. Profitable for reproof, doctrine, correction, instructions, and righteousness. For the note takers, I see Aiden over there. For the note takers, all scripture. Be mindful of it. No man wrote it. It was inspired by God. Amen. All right, let's get to the next. So, what is doctrine? We're saying these words, let's get a definition. What is doctrine? It's the definition. A belief or set of beliefs held and taught by a church, political party, or the group. All right? So this is the definition we're going to use tonight. A belief or set of beliefs held and taught by a church, political party, or other group. So we're going to expand that. We're going to expand that doctrine. All right? Ooh. Seducing spirits. And doctrine of demons. Sounds nasty, right? Seducing spirits and doctrine of demons. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 through 2. Now the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last times, who knows we're in the last times? Amen. That in the last times, some will turn away from the true faith. They will follow deceptive spirits and teachings. That come from demons. These people are hypocrites and liars, and their consciousness. Say the word. Consciousness are dead. Okay, let's keep it going. Somebody say the gospel. The gospel. The gospel. The gospel. The good news. First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse one through four. Let me. Re <laughs> I'm reading too fast, y'all. Let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news I preached to you before. You welcomed it then, and you still stand firm in it. It is this good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you. Unless, of course, you believe something that was never true in the first place. I passed on to you what was most important and what had also been passed on to me. Christ died for our sins. Just as the what? Scripture. Scripture just as the scriptures said. Verse 4. He was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day. Just as the scriptures said. The scriptures said that. Question for the audience. Doesn't matter what we believe. Yes. 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 Doesn't matter what we believe. All right, we're gonna break this down. Sound doctrine. Beliefs. It's your mindset. This is your thoughts. All right. Now the behavior is from the heart. 
It's talking about how you live. We're talking about our response and our obedience to Christ and what he's telling us to do through his word. Amen. Amen. So, belief. I think you hit the... Uh, now, go back. <laughs> All right. Talking about the microphone? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. But the beliefs, the mindset, of course, what we believe, and of course we know from sober-minded, how we think affects how we act. So, behavior, we're coming from the heart, and obedience as a living sacrifice, how we live matters. Okay? What we believe matters, and that's going to determine how we live. Let's go to the next slide. We'll get deeper into that. Oh, you can make it pop up. Somebody say, hearers and doers. Hearers and doers. Hearers and doers. Okay? Let's get into it. James chapter 1, verse 22. We're starting at verse 22. And it reads, but be doers of the word, and not hearers only. Doing what? Deceiving yourself. Deceiving yourself. It says if we're only if we're only hearers, we're deceiving ourselves. Go to the next slide. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. If anyone among you thinks he is religious, and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble, and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Amen. Get to the next slide. Somebody say a sound church. A sound church. A sound church. All right. We're hopping into Titus. Titus chapter 2, verse 1. But as for you, speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine. That the older man be sober, reverent, temperate, sound in faith, in love, in patience. The older women likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, not giving too much wine, teachers of good things. Verse 4, that they admonish the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not what? Be blasphemed. Verse 6, likewise, exhort the young men to be sober-minded. In all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works, and doctrine showing integrity, reverence, and corruptibility. Sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say of you. Amen? Amen. All right. Sit down for this one. It's pretty cool. Somebody say, deliver the message. Deliver the message. Don't change it. Don't change it. Okay, so you guys may have seen this before. They form a line. Someone taps the person. They give them a message or some type of funny thing to do. And they tap the other person. All right, so who wants to volunteer with that? We want to do that right now. Let's get a line down the middle. Let's get a line down the middle. Whoever wants to participate with that. And I guess we'll have everybody face that way starting off. And this is open to everybody. Everybody can join this. Everybody can join this. Everybody can join this. I'm not sure how Ralph's gonna do it. He's, Ralph wanted. <laughs> he's coming. Now get a straight line. Yeah, you guys can go. Uh, if you need to go, if you need to go on some A, you can. So the line can stretch up. Mercy, I, I hate to see what you want to say because it's gonna be completely. You wanna do a saying or you wanna do a gesture? I say a gesture. I'm gonna let any type of pattern of gestures. I'm gonna let Sade start it off. You come in and start it off. But we're coming from the back of the line. You tap the person in front of you, but you guys stay facing forward. Give her a gesture, then she send it down. I know. I didn't tell you. I was, yeah. 
Keep facing forward. Keep facing forward till the person taps you and gives you the gesture. Deliver the message. Don't change it. Tori, yeah, can you face it forward? Hey, hold it. Deliver the message, don't change it. How hard is it to keep a message consistent? Pretty hard, right? And this is what this, this is what this message is about tonight. Sound doctrine. This is a message that we should never change. This is all scripture. We just read that. All scripture is inspired by God. Alright? Deliver the message. Don't change it. Oh man. She didn't get a chance to get into that. Should we do it again? What you think? Yes, do it again. Let's run it back. Let's run it back. Let's run it back. <laughs> Deliver the message. Don't change it. Do you want to get involved in this? I'm sorry. I just threw you in it. Okay. Okay. Because I just threw her into an illustration. Right? If you guys need to slide up, we'll see if you guys do this time. Come here. Oh, she's in here. Cool. Yeah, do a message this time. Yeah, because she said. Because this, this is what I said. And I said. Angel got. No, I got it. I was in the middle of the game. Hey, by the time we got there, it was completely done. I knew it was going to be completely messed up until we got there. Hey, what did you do? What did you tell me? What did you say? Something? Yeah. Yeah. Deliver the message, don't change it. Delivering these messages. What's the message? What was the message? I got how great is our God up here. <laughs> I said I ate a pickle, I dipped it in a ranch, and it was sweet, sour, and good. <laughs> wow. Are you serious? Wait, wait, wait. What, what, what did you get? No, I dipped it in ranch. It, it was sweet, sweet, sour, and good. How hard is that? <laughs> wait a minute. You, what did you get? How hard is that? Wow. <laughs> but I love the 
let y'all take that into worship. <laughs> Give yourselves another hand, man. I love it. Deliver the message. Don't change it. How awesome is it that we don't have to come up with the words? We just go into the word and deliver the message as ambassadors. Amen. All right. Let's get into the next slide. <laughs> Yo. I'm sorry. <laughs> First lady got jokes. I love it. I love it. <laughs> A glow stick oxygen mask, bro. That's tough. Someone say, contend for the faith. Contend for the faith. Contend for the faith. Look at those gloves. They look heavy. All right. Jude, chapter one. Let's get into it. Got a little comfortable up here. <laughs> Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our coming salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation. Ungodly men who turned the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. All right? Give it to it. Apostates. Who's familiar with this word? Apostates? Apostasy? Sounds like apostate. Sounds like what? Apostate. Apostate. Okay. So, apostates. Abandoning a religious or political belief or principle. Alright? So we found out what beliefs were earlier. Now we're looking at Someone who abandons a belief. You had this belief already, and then you abandon this belief. Apostle. All right. Someone say simplicity in Christ. Simplicity in Christ. Simplicity. I like that. Got the little bounce in there. Simplicity in Christ. I'll show you how much of a geek I am, too, by the way. I already figured out yeah. the name. Yeah, I don't know why I did it. Anyway. <laughs> We're not going to go through a maze. There's simplicity in Christ. You can go straight to Christ. I see it too. You see it too? <laughs> yeah. Definitely. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. I hope you will put up with a little more of my foolishness. Please bear with me. For I am jealous for you with the jealousy of God himself. I promise you as a pure bride to one husband, Christ. But I fear that somehow your pure and undivided devotion to Christ will be corrupted, just as Eve was deceived by the cunning ways of the serpent. You happily put up with whatever anyone tells you, even if they preach a different Jesus than the one we preach, or a different kind of spirit than the one you receive, or a different kind of gospel than the one you believe. Let me read verse 4 again. You happily put up with whatever anyone tells you, even if they preach a different Jesus than the one we preach, or a different kind of spirit than the one you receive, or a different kind of gospel than the one you believe. Amen? Amen. So we have apostates who've abandoned those beliefs. Amen? Amen? Let's get to the next slide. Women teachers! Question mark. Women teachers. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. Likewise, also, the women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel, with modesty and self-control, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly attire, but with what is proper for women who profess godliness with good works. Verse 11. Let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness. Verse 12. I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to remain quiet. Verse 13. For Adam was born first, then Eve. Verse 14. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. Yet, she will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith and love and holiness with self-control. 
We go to the next slide. Qualifications for elders. Qualifications for elders. Let's get into it. Titus chapter 1, verse 6. An elder must live a blameless life. He must be faithful to his wife, and his children must be believers who don't have a reputation for being wild or rebellious. A church leader is a manager of God's household, so he must live a blameless life. He must not be arrogant or quick-tempered. He must not be a heavy drinker, violent, or dishonest with money. Rather, he must enjoy having guests in his home, and he must love what is good. He must live wisely and be just. He must live a devout and disciplined life. He must have a strong belief in the trustworthy message he was taught. Then he will be able to encourage others with wholesome teaching and show those who oppose it where they are wrong. Verse 10. For there are many rebellious people who engage in useless talk and deceive others. This is especially true of those who insist on circumcision for salvation. They must be silenced because they are turning whole families away from the truth by their false teaching. And they do it only for money. Verse 12. Even one of their own men, a prophet from Crete, has said about them, the people of Crete are all liars, cruel animals, and lazy gluttons. This is true, so reprimand them sternly to make them strong in the faith. Verse 14. They must stop listening to Jewish myths and the commands of people who have turned away from the truth. Everything is pure to those whose hearts are pure. But nothing is pure to those who are corrupt and unbelieving because their minds and consciousness, say that word again. Consciousness. I've been having trouble with that. Consciences are corrupted. Such people claim they know God, but they deny Him by the way they live. They are detestable and disobedient, worthless for doing anything good. Let me read verse 16 again before we go to the next slide. Such people claim they know God, but they deny him, not verbally. So that goes back to the slide where we were talking about how we live, our beliefs, as well as our actions from the heart. Such people claim they know God, but they deny him by the way they live. They are detestable and disobedient, worthless for doing anything good. Somebody say, manage your own house. Manage your own house. Manage, look at that little house. Own personal house, I can manage that. Manage your own house. What's that? Is that a doom buggy? It's a little car there. Okay, I'm getting too sucked in. I'm sorry, y'all. Manage your own house. Let's get into it. First Timothy chapter 3, starting at verse 1. This is a trustworthy saying. If someone aspires to be a church leader, he desires an honorable position. So a church leader must be a man whose life is above reproach. He must be faithful to his wife. He must exercise self-control, live wisely, and have a good reputation. He must enjoy having guests in his home. Going on again. And he must be able to teach. He must not be a heavy drinker or be violent. He must be gentle, not quarrelsome, and not love money. He must manage his own family well, having children who respect and obey him. Verse 5. For if a man cannot manage his own household... How can he take care of God's church? Amen? Amen. 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 Let's get into it. Definition of sound. We're talking about sound doctrine. We said what doctrine was, right? So now we need to see what does sound mean? Okay? Sound. Free from injury or disease. This is just definitions. Free from flaw, defect, or decay. Solid, firm. Free from error, fallacy, or misapprehension. Logically valid and having true premises. Amen? Can we agree about that? Sound doctrine? Okay. Free from flaw. Doctrine that's free from flaw and error. All inspired by God. Okay. Second Timothy chapter 4. Starting at verse 1. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ 
who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. We rush through these verses, man. I got to read this one slow. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead. This is going to happen. At his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fable. Before you go to the next one, have you, have you ever heard? You have your truth and I have my truth. Have you guys heard that saying before? Truth, one thing about truth, it has to be absolute. One of us has to be right and one of us has to be wrong. So, they don't endure sound doctrine because they have their own desires. We have our own agendas. Amen? So they heap up for themselves teachers who basically tell them what they want to hear. And they turn their ears away from truth they go into fables, myths. Okay? But you, say, look at your neighbor, say, but you. But you. But you, be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist. Excuse me, I'm not talking well tonight. Do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your what? Ministry. Fulfill your ministry. We have work to do. We have to deliver the message and not change it. Let's go to the next slide. I'll go back again. This is our summary already? Okay. We'll do fast tonight. Summary! Rather than me write my own summary, I chose to let the word summarize it. Not my opinions, all right? Let's go into it. Someone say, a godly life. A godly life. Check out those signs. That's a choice we all have to make, right? We need to do it God's way or my way. God's way or my way. That one says no exit. I'm, I'm scared to get on that one. I don't even have an exit on this road. It's like, it's like an exit. That's wild. I just noticed it. All right, let's get into it. A godly life. In closing, this is the close of the scriptures. Second Timothy chapter 3, starting at verse 12. Yes, and everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer what? Persecution. Persecution. He didn't say if you're just doing it. He said if you desire, if you want to live a godly life. I just had a thought to live right. I'm going to suffer persecution. Everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Be ready for that. But evil people and imposters, check this out, will flourish. Doesn't seem fair. But evil people and imposters will flourish. They will deceive others and will themselves be deceived. Dangerous. Verse 14. But you must remain faithful to the things you have been taught. You know they are true. For you know you can trust those who taught you. Verse 15. You have been taught the holy scriptures from childhood. And they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in who? In Christ Jesus. Okay. Verse 16 again. Different translation so we can hear it a different way. When my guy said, say it again for the people in the back. I love when he said that. I should have put it in here again. Anyway. Verse 16. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. Verse 17. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Amen? Amen. All right. I think that's the last one, should be. All right. That's all I have. That's all God gave me. I'm going to use this word. Hebrews 4.12 says the word is alive and active. There's nothing that I personally need to add to it to give it that sauce like Buffalo Wild. Okay. But anyway, I don't have to give it that special sauce. The word is, yeah, it's pretty good. We're just saying, we probably get some, oh, we'll talk about it. But 
I don't have to add anything to God's word. It's alive and breathing. It's going to do what he sends it out to do. Amen? Amen. So, I pray that you enjoy it tonight. I think we're taking a break until August. Seeing a back to school vibe there. Maybe. Yeah. Possible. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. I was hoping but, to you cool with that? Cool. But I love you guys. Pray that you enjoy it. I'm going to miss you guys for the next two months. But I love y'all. Uh, my prayers out. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for this day, for this time. Thank you for your word, God. I thank you that we will remain in sound doctrine. We understand the world tries to come in and corrupt. We understand that there are doctrinal demons. We understand those things that go outside and are anti-Christ. For you are the word, God. You came in flesh. You said the word came. The word was flesh. You dwelled among us, God. We thank you, God. For your word, for encouraging us to move forward. We thank you for teachers, God. We thank you for the fivefold ministry you've given us to go maybe edify, God, and continue on and uh, grow in you as new creation, as new creatures in Christ, God. We just thank you, God. The old things are passed away and all things have become new. We give y'all go and pray for. I pray for each and every person that's here on the sound of my voice, God. Thank you that you'll be with them, God. You know where they are, God. Meet them where they are, God. Give them everything that they need. Give them their heart's desires. I pray that you'll bless them. No sickness, no disease in their bodies, God. Heal them, God. You know what they need. You said in your word that you know we have need of, God. May we all continue to seek first the kingdom. And let all other things be added to us. We give y'all the glory and the praise for it. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Love y'all. Love y'all. Come on, let's give God a hand time of praise. Love y'all. Love y'all. Love y'all. Can you do me a favor? Hallelujah. Can you go back to that slide that uh, God's way? Yes, sir. Thank you for the water. Mm. Life is filled with choices. Amen. <clears throat> Joshua told the people in Joshua 24, I'm going to say, choose you this day who you will serve. We have two choices. You can do it God's way, or you can do it your own way. Mm -hmm. Uh, I like the scripture, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Um, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding.